In this video, I'm going to show you how to store your mushroom cultures long term without the need for a refrigerator or a freezer. This technique was discovered about 100 years ago by a guy called Aldo Castellani. It's called the Castellani method and it involves using distilled sterile water and then putting a piece of your fungal culture into the sterile water and then storing it without any gas exchange at room temperature. Cultures can stay viable for a year to 20 years. That's probably more strain dependent than anything else. And also having the ability to keep the temperatures stable in the room where you are storing the cultures. This is a great technique for low resource individuals who don't have a freezer or something like preppers who want to have a fruiting strain on hand. How does this method work? Well, basically what happens is because the mushroom cultures are stored in distilled water, they don't get any food or nutrients. And because they are inside a small test tube, which is closed, they can't get any gas exchange. So they go into a dormant state because they can't continue replicating. On top of this, the water is sterile, so there's no contaminants, which could destroy the mushroom culture. And finally, the water and its hydrating properties means that the fungal cells manage to stay alive. This means you can store your cultures long term with a couple of test tubes, some distilled water and a pressure cooker. So enough rambling, let me get into it. I've got a 15 milliliter polypropylene test tube here and I am going to pour in 10 milliliters of distilled or deionized water. You don't wanna go all the way up to the top of the test tube, but you wanna get pretty close so it's easy to get the fungal culture back out when it comes to reanimation. Pour the water into the test tube, put the lid on tight, and then finally sterilize for 30 minutes at 15 PSI. To do this, I just take all the test tubes and then place them into a glass jar. And then I take them out the glass jar when you get to your still air box, or in my case, it's gonna be a laminar flow hood. Guys, I've been working on an ebook which kind of covers the hardest part of mushroom cultivation, which is sterile technique. If you're interested in that, then go to the link down below, click it, have a read, and decide if it's something you would be interested in. I'm going to be using the Castellani method on some cordyceps strains that I've managed to develop from spores. I'm just going to do some testing and experimenting to see how long cordyceps can actually stay viable if you use this technique because there's some conflicting information online. Some people say that cordyceps will age just because of time going by, while others say that it's due to the number of replications. From what I've observed, it's the number of replications, but also it's to do with interbreeding generations from spores. If you constantly keep breeding cordyceps from the same fruit and body, for example, you find a fruit and body strain, you take the spores, you find another, you take the spores from that one, and then you find another, and you take the spores from that one. What ends up happening is the mushroom will lose the ability to create fruit and bodies, which means you no longer can grow any mushrooms from that culture. From the research I found, this normally happens in about five generations, which is why F1 spores or cultures of cordyceps go for a lot of money, and it's also why people are always out hunting for new genetics in the wild so that they can keep the genetic diversity within their stock. Enough about the cordyceps. It's very simple stuff. We're just going to take a small piece of tissue from the pots on the left and then place them into the vials on the right. 
I'm going to be using three blades. I'm going to take them straight out of the sterile packaging. I'm not going to reuse any blades because I don't want any of the tissue from the different pots getting into the different vials. I want to keep all of the vials and the cultures and the genetics separate. First thing I'm going to do is just organize my workspace a little bit. Then I'm going to loosen the lids on the pot that I'm going to be doing the transfer from. Assemble a scalpel from the sterile packaging. and cut away a little bit of tissue and agar from the pot and then quickly transfer it into the test tube. So here, just because my hands were all over the scalpel handle just there, I've decided to give it a quick flame sterilize before I put a new scalpel blade on top because that's going to be coming in close contact with the actual culture.
Getting a little bit tired of messing around with the lids in one hand, so I'm just going to take them off fully this time. When I do that, I move the test tube that I'm going to be inoculating to the front so that the one in front isn't blowing onto the one behind it. And finally, the last step is just to put some parafilm around the lids, um, or you can use grafting tape. I know some people use that because it's cheaper. So make sure the lids are on tight and then just wrap it in parafilm. Then finally, leave these at room temperature, undisturbed, and I'll make another video in the future coming back to seeing whether cordyceps can be stored using the Castellani method. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one.